Thousands of years ago, there was nothing, almost nothing. There were forests and fields, small settlements, but something very interesting started to happen. Approximately 5,000 years ago, when Avebury was built. Intriguing and very out of place monuments started to appear, such as Stonehenge and stone circles in Avebury. Why are they out of place? If you consider the amount of effort it would take by today's standards to build a monument like this with current technology we have, it would be a very big project. The project that would require incredible amount of planning, resources and high level of astronomical knowledge too. Interestingly enough, the building of such huge and much misunderstood constructions didn't end with Stonehenge and Avebury. All around the world it seems that people were building huge stone complexes which in one way or another had astronomical links. These monuments are really scattered around the world. For instance, Easter Islands has an incredible amount of stone heads weighing up to 80 tons or more. With no trees to assist the building process and with sparse population, it really is hard to imagine how did they manage to build something like that. The Great Pyramids of Egypt, where up to this day archaeologists keep discovering new chambers, gradually agreeing that it has not been possible to build something like this with our current technology too. The mysterious Pyramid of Chichen Itza, Machu Picchu of Peru, a mysterious city which was built in the Andes with nothing to hold stones together, so essentially they were like a three-dimensional jigsaw. And that city had astronomical links as well. The pyramids of Palenque in Mexico, the stones of Karnak in France, where 3,000 stones stand still in mystery. The list could continue much longer as there are hundreds, if not thousands of locations which really challenge the imagination. Today we're in Avebury. The sacred landscape is full of hills, ditches and other landscape markings making it the largest stone circle in the world. Avebury is roughly four or five thousand years old. It really is a shot in the dark when it comes to a specific and precise date. We are talking a thousand year difference there. I can imagine that a lot could have happened within a thousand years. Unlike the modern life where every step of each project is heavily documented, very little is known about the grandiose circle. One thing that is left for us is to reverse engineer its purpose. A curious thing comes out with all the mysterious megalithic structures is the link to the stars. There is almost always a connection to the celestial bodies and their movement. Winter solstice, summer solstice, the movement of stars, all of that plays a gigantic role in these monuments. When you walk amidst those stones, it certainly feels very unusual, very different from any other places we've been to. Considering the age of the monument, it was not an art installation. It certainly had a purpose, a purpose which we could only guess now. But consider what was life like in those days when it was built. The biggest question to me is why not create a complex out of smaller units which are more manageable. It would be much quicker to build for sure. Avebury 
his bigger brother, so to speak, Stonehenge, is a fine example where gigantic units were transported for miles to be built in a very specific area. It is about 5,000 years old, which is approximately 1,000 years older than the oldest pyramid in Egypt. If you consider the grandeur and the massive, massive logistical scale of this project, it simply becomes an incredible, incredible piece of architecture. Who built it? Why was it built? What purpose did it really serve? We still ask the very same question right now as our ancestors asked before. In 17th century it was proposed that Druids have built the monument, however how did they do it and why did they do it still remains a big, big question. I can only imagine the kind of obstacles people had to overcome and hurdles that they faced and challenges that they faced when they were transporting these gigantic stones. Interestingly enough, the stones are placed in holes made in chalk, so they are held in sockets, just like teeth. Now, of course, they are restored, but in the medieval times, many stones were toppled over and broken down for building material or some other reasons, which, again, we're not quite sure about either. Behind me you see the ancient stone circle. We still don't know what purpose did it serve, we still don't know how these massive boulders were transported to this place, and what, but what we do know is that it stands tall for thousands of years. Those are the trees where you feel particularly still. It feels particularly special here. And those ribbons are people's wishes. This space is very, very special. It's almost like a, a small temple, a sh small shrine, if you will. And each ribbon represents somebody's wish or somebody's, somebody's greeting in a way. And it's pretty incredible to see a place like this. It's interesting that my journey and my love for Avebury starts really earlier on. I was a kid, I, was, I think I was about 12. And uh, my uncle and aunt, Anna and Jack, uh, brought me here to show this wonderful village and I thought this just doesn't look real it's everything is everything has some sort of magical feel to it obviously I knew nothing about the history of the of the stone circles or anything like that but just being here experiencing this atmosphere was incredible
This is Silbury Hill. It is incredibly tall and many people think that it's a fully man-made structure. It does recall a pyramid covered with a turf of soil. I truly don't know what it is, but size-wise it's very similar to smaller pyramids of Giza in Egypt. Could the purpose of this hill be similar to those of the Egyptian pyramids? Nobody knows, as nobody quite knows what the purpose of the Egyptian pyramids is on the first place. Potentially, it could have been a tomb of legendary King Sil, who was buried on horseback. According to the legends, his ghost haunts the site, as his golden armor shines in the night as he rides around the hill. Very little is known about this enigmatic place. This beautiful site will always have us amazed and intrigued. And for me, it will always be a place to come and think, to come and experience something, something I'm searching for. I would also like to extend my gratitude to Emity Trap for the music. This song means a lot to me. And Igor Peskov for portrait photography too. You can find the links to their great work below this piece. And if you enjoyed this video and you'd like to buy me a cup of coffee, you can do so using the link below too. Until next time, bye bye.